Hello and welcome to the October edition of Inside Rovers, the show this month coming to you from the Rovers training ground here at Cantley Park. It was a tough start to the month though, but they did find their feet against Grimsby Town in the Checker Trade Trophy. That win giving Rovers a confidence boost, but it's time now to get to know one of our players a little bit better. Here's Alfie May. Alfie May, welcome into Inside Rovers. It's great to have you here. How are you feeling? Yeah, pretty tired after the game. But oh, sorry about that. Are you ready right. to get going though? Yeah, yeah, cool. Okay, first of all, uh, what made you get into football? Um, it was, my brothers played a lot and my dad, my dad wanted me to play. Um, and my mum's a big, big uh, support for myself. So it's like a, a family, family base. Oh. Like we all play football and, and my cousins and that. So yeah, just them really. Mm -hmm. Nice. And you're obviously a striker. So what's the best goal that you've scored just from memory? Um, probably the game against Grimsby in the Checker Trade Trophy on my weaker foot. The one just gone? Yeah, yeah. Just cut in. She put it in the top stanch. Uh -huh. What's the highlight of your footballing career so far? Uh, signing for Doncaster Rovers. Oh. Um, it was uh, 23 when I first signed my first pro deal. So it's a big achievement for myself and, and my family. And so where were you before this? Were you just in like the lower divisions? In yeah, England? I was in eight, uh, the eighth tier below uh, this league, is it? Or League Two? Wow. Who was someone that you look up to in football? Like, could be one of your family members even. Could no, be someone here. Um, <laughs> Right, mostly like I'm a Liverpool supporter and Robbie Fowler I was a big fan when, when I was young and watching him and nice. Robbie, yeah, Robbie Fowler, Mike Lowe and that type of player. Mm -hmm. Love it. Okay, now we're going to get into some general knowledge questions. Oh, so nice. what is the capital of Germany? No cheating. You can take your time. Capital of Germany? Yeah. <laughs> Munich. I can't think of a football team there, but it's like got a lot of history to the city. It starts with B. Berlin? Yeah. <laughs> oh, cut that. Berlin. Okay. Got it. Uh, how many stars are there on the American flag? How many stars? Stars. It's something to do with the amount of states that Five? they have. Mm. All right, let me have one more guess. Okay. Is, is, right, give me a clue. Is it's it, quite a lot. Quite a lot. Like a lot. All right, 24. 15. 15? 50. 50? Yeah. You know they like all the stars in the top left corner? Oh, I don't know what flag. I, we'll have to Google it after this I'm game. English through and through. <laughs> okay, who won the Premier League last season? Manchester City. 
Uh, who was the most followed person on Instagram? It just happened the other day, it's a footballer. Oh, is it? Mm. I wish it was real. Right. <laughs> it was Selena Gomez, personal favourite. Yeah, he's a footballer, he's like probably the most popular footballer. At the moment. At the mo he plays now? Mm-hmm. It's got to be Chris Sharman. Yeah, it is. No, I still that one right. Yeah. Okay, now we're moving on. So, if I was to ask any of your teammates, what would do you think they'd say is your best quality as a person? Not Be, a player. Uh, being tall. Being what? Being tall. All oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, what is uh, a place that you want to go on holiday that you've not been before? India. Oh, why India? Uh, I'm a massive cricket fan. Oh, um, I see. And that's obviously the biggest area to, to watch the cricket. Well, in, IPL and, and all yeah, that stuff. And the atmosphere out there apparently is really good. I've had a few people that have gone to India and watched the cricket. So uh, uh, me and my me and my dad are definitely going to um, try and get out there. Oh, that's cool. Uh, okay, what is the strangest thing that you've ever eaten? Can you take your time? It's a random question. <laughs> my, uh. Uh, my, we, we, so when I was younger, my brother used to like make me eat things. Um, <laughs> so we used to do like food tasting, but blindfolded. So I thought it'd be funny to put like fairy liquid, uh, fairy up liquid on um, a rich tea. Oh my god! So I think that's quite possibly the worst. Did you it. throw up? No, it just tasted a little bit funny. But I, I, I enjoy rich tea biscuits, they're my favourite. Okay. So he, he, he sort of like wore me in there, didn't he? Yeah. Uh, who's been your worst roommate? My worst... Oh, do you know what? I haven't... Um, I've only had Marco Morosi and he's... he's he, do you know what? He don't, he don't shut up. Really? But he's actually a brilliant roommate. Like, I, I wouldn't want to change him. Oh, he's that's actually, nice. He's actually... He's, yeah, he's... A, He's a close mate of mine, and he's a good, very good roommate to have. Oh. He brings he brings the uh, the goodies in the Does little bag. He brings these um these Slovakian biscuit things. I don't know what they are. But they're, they're definitely Slovakian or Polish. I've never seen them before. Okay. Uh, okay. And what is your go-to karaoke song on a night out? If you've got one. If you don't have one, we're going to give you the option of going for like a dance move that you do when you're out in the town. If you seen the. the no one has ever had a crowd like this, have they? No, they haven't. There's quite a few of you guys here. Um, um, yeah, I'm definitely. Uh, I'll just. I'll do a dance move. <laughs> okay, moving on to the quick fire questions. Winter or summer? Definitely summer. Uh, the Great British Bake Off or X Factor? X Factor. Mm -hmm. One Direction or Little Mix? One Direction. Uh, chocolate or sweets? Sweets. So you're all done. Ah, perfect. <laughs> Easy, eh? Yeah. All right, now you get the uh, luxury of nominating someone to do this next month. I'm gonna go, Danny Andrew. Danny Andrew. Yeah. yeah. Right. Why him? Um, Is it just his time? Because he's just me and him have a little now, like we have a love hate, like uh, he, we have a little dig at each other, okay. and then we're cuddling. So I want to just put him under a little bit of pressure to see what he deals with. Yeah. And he's, and to be honest. He's a very good singer. Really? So don't give him the option. So Danny has to sing. Yeah, he has to sing. Okay. His voice is, is amazing. Okay, well Alfie, thank you very much for joining us and all the best for the rest of the season. Um, Danny, we'll see you next month. Well, here we are in the kit room at Cantley Park. The players get to training and all their gear is laid out for them here. So they just come here, get changed and off they go. But back to the action now and we were still searching for our first one against Rochdale.
first two defeats behind us. We got our first win of the season, but can we carry on that momentum against Gillingham? That late equaliser from Paul Taylor making sure that we got something from that match. But stepping away from the pitch now, the players enjoy the visit to one of the new attractions in Doncaster. It means enormous amounts to us and uh, to all their uh, all their supporters. Uh, it's a great opportunity for uh, the supporters to meet the players and see that the players are just. Normal guys like everybody else, I think it's great. And from, from my perspective, I, I think it's, it's a great privilege to be able to welcome them to, to flip out in Doncaster. It just comes natural, mate. Yeah, we're not uh, superstars, we're just human beings that, that come to uh, places like this with our children and, um, and have a good time just like everybody else. It's been really good, yeah, meeting them and seeing them do way of seeing them, so like watching them from a distance on a match day, so it's better. Yeah. I must admit this has been one of the best, uh, most enjoyable ones that, uh, that we've done as a squad of players. I think everybody's enjoyed it, all smiles on everybody's faces, obviously the kids that come here as well, they've, they've enjoyed having us here and yeah, it's been a real, real good afternoon. So, no, it's a big thank you to the Flip Heart team for welcoming us down, but no, it's, it's been a real, real pleasure to be here. Back to League One and next up we face Sunderland who brought down 4,000 fans to the Keepmoat Stadium making it a very noisy Tuesday night before an away trip to Coventry on Saturday.
October done and dusted, let's see what manager Grant McCann has to say. I think the Akron game was quite, was quite even really. Um, it was two good teams, uh, you know, on a good run at the time. Um, we certainly were. We'd won the previous four, um, so it was. It was. It, we knew it was going to be a tough game. It always is going to Akron, um, but it was an even game, um, and we get done right at the end of the game on sloppy from us. Really, I think we lost the, the first header. We lost the second ball, um, and then we just had a, a couple of mistakes that led to it. Cost of the game. Uh, so overall, in that game, pleased with some some bits of our play, um, even though there's nothing in the game. Um, the Fleetwood game, I thought we played really well. Although I know it sounds silly that we lost the game 4-0. Um, I thought we created a lot of good chances. Um, didn't take them. Um, but yeah, obviously we're coming away with with uh, zero points from those two games, which was disappointing. After Fleetwood, we we, we had Grimsby. Um, in, in the Checker Trade Trophy and we, we, we wanted to make sure we had a response in that because we'd lost two in a row. Um, we, we, we changed the team about a bit, but I think it was only one out of the previous uh, team that started against Fleetwood that played and that was Herbie Cain. Um, so we shifted the mentality a little bit um, in terms of we wanted to make sure we won the next game uh, and being at the Checker Trade also that you know we give ourselves a chance now to qualify with a game against Nuts County coming up. Um, and then we moved into the league game obviously against Rochdale um, and our focus was again making sure we can get back to winning ways in the league. We've done it in the cup, now can we do it in the league? So um, we worked hard you know, on the Wednesday, Thursday, Friday leading into the game um, and we had a good, good response really. It was a tough game, it really was. Rochdale's another easy place to go. Obviously then moving into the Gillingham game at home, uh, really horrendous start from us considering um, two early goals, uh, but we got ourselves back into the game from a really good second half performance and I think the stats after the game said we had 38 shots on goal, um, some of our play was good, but again conceded a late goal, um, but then showed real good, um, a real good character to, to get an equaliser right at the death, so I was pleased with that. In the Sunderland game, as we knew, obviously there had been again a team coming to us on a good run, but we felt as if we were going into the game on, a, on, a, on back of obviously two wins and a draw. Um, so we, we were in a good place as well. Um, so we knew it was a difficult game. Um, we knew they'd come and, and try and play the way we play, similar to the way we play. So possession football on the front foot, try and be positive in their play, um, and it proved just that. It was a great game. I thought it was a really good effort for, for League One football. I thought two teams playing the right way. Two teams that I, that I believe will be firmly in the mix at the end of the season. I must be one of them, which is good. Um, so that was a real good ad for it, um, you know, for the league. I think. I think the the Coventry game. Um, I, I looked at myself really. I didn't feel uh, from probably Thursday, Friday, that the focus was quite right with the group, and it's the first time I probably felt that. And um, I should have changed the team. I had the team in my head from Thursday. I should have changed it on the Friday. I didn't. I stuck with it. Um, and we went into the game, and I was going into the game uncomfortable, to be honest. Um, so that's a lesson for me. I always learn as a manager that you know, if, if I'm not feeling something, then I've got to act on it. And I felt that into the Coventry game, um, and it turned out that it was probably the worst 45 minutes that I've seen since I've been here. But second half, we got the grips with it, and we changed a few things around personnel and, and shape, um, and we looked again. So we've gone from probably our worst 45 minutes to one of the best 45 minutes that we've seen this season um, and should have come away with Coventry with at least a draw. So disappointing to lose the game um, but we all took responsibility in that um, because we, we all win lose and, and draw together. Really annoying that we keep getting into managers rooms after the game and they keep telling us that we're the best team they've played. It doesn't sit well with me when we lose and they tell me that. So that's the thoughts from Grant McCann. It is now time to reveal your goal of the month. Once again, thank you very much for your company here on Inside Rovers and we'll see you very soon.